I can have an example of a patient, um, not too old, 71 year old, uh, that she came refer to me uh, basically because I'm uh, part of one of uh, the trials on the use of transcatheter aortic valve implantation in patients with moderate aortic stenosis and heart failure with a reduced ejection fraction below 50%. The rationale behind that trial is that uh, patients with moderate aortic stenosis and impaired left ventricular systolic function, uh, they may have more symptoms and they may have a worse prognosis because uh, the ventricle is not in a good condition and has also an obstruction uh, that is uh, the moderate aortic stenosis. According to the current guidelines, if the patient doesn't need revascularization, coronary revascularization, that patient needs to be treated medically and with a guideline-based medical therapy for heart failure. But we know from some retrospective data that these patients do not do well. So since we have now transcatheter aortic valve implantation, and uh, we know that we can perform the, the procedure under local anesthesia and is safe, would be reasonable for these patients to try to uh, solve the aortic valve problem and see whether the patient improves in terms of outcome, in terms of quality of life and reduction of symptoms, and uh, also in terms of left ventricular systolic function. So to find those patients sometimes is difficult, but we can find them. And uh, this patient came to me uh, referred for the possibility to participate in these studies. She's 71 year old and she has a history of uh, diabetes, uh, atrial fibrillation with uh, various uh, radiofrequency catheter ablation procedures and always uh, um, recurrent atrial fibrillation that make her very symptomatic. A couple of years ago, she also had a percutaneous coronary intervention that was um, because coronary artery disease was diagnosed during the performance of a CT uh, coronary angiography to plan uh, a radiofrequency catheter ablation uh, because of atrial fibrillation. They were detected there two uh, lesions and they were uh, treated with uh, stent. And in one of the echocardiograms, uh, the patient has reduce left ventricular systolic function, atrial fibrillation, and moderate aortic stenosis. Now, this patient, because she is not well controlled with medication, and despite the various uh, ablation procedures, she has recurrence of atrial fibrillation, was offered the possibility to do uh, his bundle ablation and implantation of cardiac resynchronization therapy. And despite that, the patient comes to the emergency department with uh, decompensation, with heart failure. So when she comes to me, I explain the rationale of uh, the study. I check the echocardiogram, and indeed it's a moderate aortic stenosis, but a little bit doubtful because these patients, uh, they, they are quite challenging to diagnose the severity of the aortic valve. If we measure ourselves, the aortic valve was 1.1 area uh, square centimeters for the area, but the gradients were low. And that can be because of the reduced left ventricular systolic function. When we send the images to the core lab, the core lab said that was severe aortic stenosis. So there is, where do you do the next step? What do you do uh, in order to discern whether it's moderate aortic stenosis or severe aortic stenosis? So the core lab recommended the vitamin stress echo that we did. I was much more in pro of performing a computed tomography because if we are thinking that this patient will benefit from transcatheter aortic valve implantation, we will need the CT anyway. And the CT, based on calcium score, will give us uh, a surrogate of how severe the aortic valve stenosis is by measuring the calcium of the aortic valve. When we did the vitamin stress echo, it looked severe because the area was around 0.9 and the gradient increased. And when we look at the CT, uh, the aortic valve calcification is very much high, it's above 2,000. That will indicate for a woman that is severe aortic stenosis. But we were a lot of, uh, um, there, was, there was a lot of controversy because actually the calcification of the aortic valve was much more related to the aortic wall and not the aortic valve itself.
So that posed a lot of discussions, and eventually the patient was considered to have severe aortic stenosis based on the dobutamine stress echo. The patient is waiting now for a transcatheter aortic valve implantation outside the trial because it's not moderate aortic stenosis. But I think that that is an example where you have the help of uh, various imaging modalities where it could have been maybe better um, to see uh, how the disease has progressed and how to see, how, to see the different echocardiograms during follow-up and also the CT to see how the calcification of the aortic valve has uh, evolved and maybe put the label earlier that this patient, the main problem is the aortic stenosis and until we don't solve that, the patient may not improve. So this was an example that is quite controversial, that is not so easy and straightforward as we think valvular heart disease is. And you have uh, various um, disciplines involved in this case, for example, the electrophysiologist for the atrial fibrillation, the heart failure specialist for the treatment of the heart failure, and the imager and the specialist on valvular heart disease and the interventionalist to decide which is the best treatment for this patient.